For this video, we are going to be learning about PC-11. PC-11 is a two-part epoxy, meaning that it literally comes in two different parts. Um, it's an industrial epoxy. Unlike PC-7, which is black, PC-11 is white. And because of this, you can add colorants to it. So today, we're gonna talk a little bit about curing times, um, different colorants, and how to mix this stuff. Now, when you're mixing this, um, you want to take a pop popsicle stick, or um, this is an old uh, paintbrush where the actual brush fell off. Um, I like to use this because I can scrape the edge of this jar. So one half of it is white, and as you'll see in a second, the other half is green. Now when you're mixing this, you want to have equal parts. If you don't, um, at least if you don't have approximately equal parts, then your epoxy is not going to cure. It will always be a little bit sticky. So this is our second part. Different color, right? Um, now, I tried to get as much off of this as I could before I put it into the other jar because once these two things meet, once they combine, they're going to want to start to cure and harden. So I don't want to mix a bunch of the white stuff in here. I also don't want to mix a bunch of part B, this green stuff, in the other jar. So I'm just going to attempt to get vaguely the same amount. So like, if I were to mix that much green with that much white, that's not going to work. It's not going to cure. Um, it will probably just forever be sticky and it will never be um, that industrial strength that you need out of this epoxy. The cool thing about PC-11 versus PC-7 is that it's waterproof. So this will bond ceramics, wood, wire, plexiglass, pretty much anything. Um, and uh, I learned that while I was making jewelry a little while ago, I was um, using this to adhere these ceramic pieces to the ends of earrings. And it worked out great because people sweat and with PC7, it might irritate your skin, but this is waterproof, so it won't. Now, it's kind of hard to guess about how much you need. I'm gonna get a little bit more of the green. I keep calling it the green of part B. Um, I am not wearing gloves just yet. I'm about to put them on. This stuff is extremely hard to get off of your hands. You'll need like a scrub brush or that orange soap, um, but I would recommend wearing gloves. Like I said, I'm about to put that on. Um, so I got just a little bit more of the green that I wanted, or part B that I wanted. So I'm gonna get just a smidge more of part A. I like using a paintbrush versus a popsicle stick um, because of this technique that I'm doing here. I'm placing the paintbrush down and it's like cleaning this, this rounded stick for me. So that's about, <laughs> sometimes you'll end up going back and forth a little bit, which is what I'm about to do. I'm gonna get just like a smidge more of part B. But because this thing is round, yeah, I think, yeah, okay. Um, because this is round, I'm pushing it down onto the cardboard and twisting it, and it's cleaning that for me. So I'm not sticking this back into part B with a bunch of part A on there. Don't wanna cross contaminate. All right, so let's talk about colorants before we mix. I'm gonna put on my gloves. Um, so as you can see, I've already, um, I had a little bit of a explosion with some of my colorants. Um, if you buy these colorants, they're extremely potent and they will stain your skin. Like I've washed my hands off, so I got most of it off, but I got some purple and that's gonna be there for a minute. So this stuff, while it's sticky, 
even when it's in this state, which we'll talk about what this is in just a second. But the colorants and this PC11 um, is not harmful to the skin, but it's very difficult to get off. And if you have sensitive skin, you definitely don't want to get that on there. So I would recommend wearing gloves. There are a lot of different colorants that you can buy. Um, all of these are different brands, different types, but I got all of them. I think that label is uh, inked out. This was the explosion one. Um, but all of these you can get from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. Um, you could order some online. Um, there is a great, if you're looking into resin or epoxy, one of my favorite websites, a video cut out there, um, the engineer guy, uh, he sells or they sell a lot of different colorants, a lot of different resins and epoxies, foaming resins. Um, so if you ever get into that kind of stuff, that's a great website to go to. You can also order this stuff off of like Amazon. Um, but I, these were all like discounted at Michael's for, you know, a couple bucks or a dollar or something. Um, with epoxy or with PC11 specifically, I like to use um, a liquid colorant. They do sell colorants that come in a powder form, but uh, it just takes a lot longer to mix this. And while your working time is about 12, well, this doesn't cure until 12 to 24 hours. Your working time, depending on what type of colorant, in my experience, um, could be anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour. So some of these colorants, and to be honest, I, I haven't really nailed down like what brand makes the curing time speed up, but um, sometimes I'll use a colorant and I can walk away for an hour and I come back and it's ready to work with. Sometimes I use a different type and after like 30 minutes, it's ready to go. So I haven't totally nailed down like why that happens yet, um, but all of these are fairly potent. So you don't need to like unleash this bottle and just like, you know, go crazy um, with a lot of color. Like this is a pretty potent color. So why don't we do, let's do this orange color. So as you can see, I accidentally cut off the tip of this, but that's okay. Um, I'm just gonna shake this up a little bit. That is about all you need. I'm just trying to get the excess off of there. So this is gonna be really vibrant, even with just those teeny tiny drops. So you can use a variety of different things. I have um, this handy dandy little spatula type thing. Um, and I use this just specifically for epoxy. I don't wanna use this with clay or anything like that. Um, and I also, you wanna make sure that you clean it because once this stuff cures, you have to use like a grinder or a sander to get it off. So I'm just going to mix both of the parts. I'm going back through, scraping it up, sort of flattening it back down. And you can see the color's already starting to come through a little bit. Now, some colorants that you get, you may, as you're mixing, say, you know, that's not really as bright as I wanted it to be. Um, and depending on the brand, it may not be as potent as some others. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of this awesome orange, if I can. Maybe not. Well, so some, <laughs> this is a great lesson. Cause sometimes your colorants have a shelf life and it feels like kind of plastic in there. But you know what? That's okay. I'm just gonna go to my other colorant. We're gonna make this more of a peach color. So I've shaken this up beforehand and I'm 
just going to mix it a little bit with this. Just have a dab of that. And I'm just going to sort of spread this a little bit throughout the mixture. Again, I'm doing my little twisty method. Try to get all of that pigment off. Now, while you guys are working, I'm working on a cardboard surface. Um, if you are working in the studio, if you're working on your desk, wherever you're working, please put down cardboard over everything. I just put this down on my counter, but I also know how to get all of this stuff off because I've been doing this for a little while. Um, and even then, there's still a little bit of residue. Once this stuff is on a surface, it is not coming off. This is industrial epoxy. So please, for the love of God, put something down before you start to work with this stuff. I use cardboard because I can just trash this once I'm done. Um, but you know, you don't want to spill or get any excess on, you know, your kitchen table or something like that. Um, this stuff is no joke. So make sure that your surface that you're working on is prepared properly. So that's kind of a nice peachy color. Um, while I'm mixing, I, um, while this looks like it's fully mixed, you can see sort of on there that there's a lot of white that's unmixed. So I will mix this a couple times and then I'll scrape everything off of my little palette. Um, and then I'll just start mixing again. Because these two things, when they interact, they start to cure, it's imperative that you have it all properly mixed. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but you can see right here, there's that white, orange, darker orange. That white, if it's not mixed in, it's not gonna cure. And when we say cure, I'm talking about both of these things reacting to each other and becoming a permanent stiff surface. So that's kind of a pretty peach color. I wanna add just a little bit more. Like I said, some uh, pigments are more potent than others, but you can see that like, I haven't even, you know, I'm not pouring this onto there. I'm just getting a little bit of colorant and you know, it's better to start out with a little bit and then realize you want it a little bit more vibrant, it's pretty difficult to go the opposite way. If you get this thing like day glow, fluorescent yellow pink, and you wanted a nice pastel pink, you're kind of out of luck, unless you just decide to mix the entire thing of PC7, or PC11 rather. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Mixing this will give you a nice forearm workout. Um, and as you're mixing, um, like I said, I kind of keep going back in, scrape up the whole thing, and then start over. That way I get a nice consistent mixture of the epoxy. Take it from me, I did a resin piece in grad school with about a couple hundred little tiny grids of resin and when you're mixing resin on that small of a scale it's really easy to not get your measurements right and to not mix properly so this resin piece which is still in my studio is still currently leaking resin after about six years or however long it's been since I've been in grad school this stuff will never cure ever 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 if you don't mix it properly So that seems about right. I'm just gonna scrape this off, mix it a little bit more to make sure that that colorant is mixed in because I don't want any weird striations of like bright orange in this peach color. Now that I've mixed this, you're gonna wanna check it in like 20, 30 minutes. But I'm not gonna make you wait that long. 
done a Martha Stewart type video where on this side of the cardboard we have pre-mixed PC-11. I'm just going to scrape this excess off. Again, once this stuff is on a surface and it cures, it is not going anywhere. So, um, you know, you don't want to have to trash this scraper or your handy dandy popsicle stick or painting stick or whatever you're using. So you want to make sure that once you're done mixing that you get a paper towel. And you get all of that off. I have also made the mistake of forgetting to wipe off this and then setting it down on my counter and it getting stuck to that counter and it took literally like a metal chisel to get it off of that counter. So it's very important that you clean your tools as you go. It's also very important that you put the cap back on these. Um, if you feel like the fumes from these smell a little weird, wear your mask. Um, they aren't toxic, but they do, it is sort of like smelling a whole bunch of Sharpies all at once. So, um, you know, if you feel like the fumes are kind of gross, uh, make sure that you wear a mask. Okay, so I have pre-mixed, uh, whoops, don't do that. Um, I've pre-mixed this other PC-11 about maybe an hour ago. So I'm gonna use my glove to do this because I don't want to get it on my fingers. But right now, this is super sticky, totally unworkable. It's gonna get all over your fingers. So you need to wait until it's at that sweet spot where you can actually mold it. Now this is a little stiff. It's gotten a little bit past that workable condition. This is the same material. This is what I use in my sculptures to kind of give off that chewed up bubblegum look. So again, this is a little bit stiff. It's still workable. Um, this is why it's so important to consistently check. Like after you mix this, check back in in 20 minutes. Just like touch it. If it's still too sticky, check back in in 10 minutes. Um, if it gets too hard, there's no going back. Once this is cured, like I said, there is no going back. Um, so this is a little bit too stiff. I don't need to use water, but this stuff is like Play-Doh. And if it's a little stickier than this, it will stick to your fingers. Um, and so, it, and it's kind of difficult, at least for me to use gloves when I'm molding with it like this. Um, so uh, I like to keep a little bit of water, just like a cup of water around, get your fingers a little bit wet. And if it's still too sticky, you can kind of, um, the water sort of acts as like a release agent so it doesn't stick to your hands. I'm gonna set this aside for right now. Um, I've already used some of this PC-11 on this sculpture, which I'm now realizing looks insane from this angle. Um, so this is one of the sculptures that I'm working on and I'm just gonna move this right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Sorry for the angle change. Um, so this pink right here, this is um, this same material. All of these connection points are this same material. It's just a different colorant. And so um, in using this, at least for my sculptures, I piece these together um, bit by bit. So I start with these like little sticks and I just sort of figure out where I want these connection points to go. So I am just slowly sort of like piecing this over the edge of this clay bit. And then, yeah, I think I'll put this one right here. It's really easy to mold. And so while all of this hot pink color, um, 
that wasn't one of those, that's plasticine. Um, while this hot pink color is still curing, this, all of these other points, like these are plastic, they're totally cured. Um, and so while you're working with this, you can also sort of celebrate the elastic nature of it. And I like to take bits of it in my own work and just sort of drape it over. And gravity, while this is curing, is going to pull this down a little bit. So things to note when you're working with this material, gloves, cardboard or paper on your workspace, um, and move slowly with the colorants because you don't need a whole lot all at once.